Well, hello everybody, and uh, welcome back to Kingston. It's uh, second week of May, and Mother's Day in North America, so all the very best to every mother out there. And it's time to look at the third crossing again. Busy period, let's go and have a look. We're going to do things a little differently for this update. It's been a busy time, and there's been a lot going on at both ends of the causeway. But on this occasion, I think we'll view the activity chronologically. Although we produced a special video on the subject, it's certainly worth mentioning that the start of it saw the departure of the Bauer BG39 drill rig. This had been idle in the Upper East Side car park for several weeks, awaiting specialist transport. But now it's gone, to a new project in Cambridge, Ontario. Weighing some £120,000, the rig required a specialist trailer, which separated in the middle to allow loading. On the west end, work began to lay the concrete slabs that will form the basis of the roadway when the bridge is completed. Perhaps because the abutment at the west end was not completely ready, the first slabs were laid between piers 1 and 2. The section leading out from the abutment would be addressed later. At the abutment itself, work continued to remove the forming frames that had shaped the concrete and to make other adjustments. Looking along the girder line, it became clear too that work had begun to place piping in the service channel that will serve the completed bridge. The LR1200 crane was moved to the east side of the lift bridge. Beside it, two steel sections rested on their trailers, where it turned out they would remain for several days. It seems likely that they'll eventually link the existing steel structure to Pier 20, which stands on dry land and is the first point of contact with the east shoreline. Iron workers continue to prepare this pier to receive the steel. They're also very busy installing the myriad of steel braces and struts that reinforce the largest and most obvious components. A great deal of use is made of the telescopic lifts that enable workers to access areas that would otherwise be difficult to reach. Although there are significant platforms and frames installed to allow work to be conducted, Sometimes a lift is the best, and occasionally the only solution. While all this was taking place, a truck arrived bringing the formers that will be used to frame the east abutment ready for concrete to be poured. Once again, the telescopic crane proved very useful in the process of unloading and placing these formers by the base of the abutment. For whatever reason, perhaps the need for further preparation, or perhaps because of inclement weather, several days passed without installation of a major steel component. This would all change late in the period. Complete removal of the formers from the west abutment made it possible for slab laying to begin between that and Pier 1. Also on the west end, it was noted that a truck arrived carrying steel frameworks that are apparently walkways that will contribute to safety as work continues out along the concrete girders. There was some low-key activity noted in the car park, where it appeared that small concrete blocks were undergoing minor adjustment, perhaps to ensure the correct fit in their intended destination. Two concrete girders, 46 and 47, which had arrived the day before, were installed early on the morning, following the usual pattern of activity. These marked the first link between piers 9 and 10. Further along the causeway, scaffolding was being moved to facilitate work on unfinished piers. Meticulous planning ensures that each item required for a particular task is ready to serve whenever needed. Nearby, the telescopic crane was busy again, unloading rebar that will go into the upper section of piers that have yet to be completed. To the lay observer, the sequence of preparation of the concrete piers does not seem to be consistent, but knowing the level of detailed planning for every aspect of this project, there's clearly some clever scheme behind it. The 
penultimate day of this working week proved to be a significant one. With the 21st and 22nd steel sections linking the existing structure to Pier 20. This means that landfall has been achieved at both ends of the bridge. In a change from the timings we've come to expect, with girders normally arriving on Mondays and Wednesdays, a second pair arrived today. Girders 48 and 49 were installed in the middle of the causeway between piers 9 and 10. Girders now reach more than halfway across the river. As if competing for attention, two more steel sections were placed at the east end, completing the set of four supported by Pier 20. But the major installations involving concrete and heavy metal are not the only things going on. Much marginal work takes place, largely unremarked. Examples of this are work conducted by Promark, a company dedicated to locating underground structures. They've been engaged in preparations for work on the junction linking Gore Road to Highway 15. One consequence is a veritable field of marker flags identifying subterranean pipe and cable runs around the area. On the other side of the river, in the east car park, fairly large quantities of ancillary items await their contribution to the grand scheme of work. In many cases, their purpose will only become clear as construction progresses and we can follow them to their eventual resting place. I would be failing today if I didn't send best wishes to all the mothers out there. I'm thinking particularly of those proud mums whose sons and daughters are engaged in this historic project, whatever part they play. In closing, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's taken the time to watch this update. If you have questions or comments about any aspect of it, please use the area below. I try to respond promptly to every entry. Don't forget either to have a look at the links in the video description below. They provide additional information on the project and about the many great Canadian companies, organisations and associations contributing to its completion. Well, I hope that was interesting. It's uh, not certain when the next uh, edition will be, but uh, look for it in about a week to 10 days. And in the meantime, take care, stay safe and please consider subscribing to the channel if you uh, want to be certain that you'll catch each update. Bye now from Kingston.